look at our tail of the tape. Here's how the numbers break themselves down. Trout is four years older. The height advantage in favor of Charlo and Bull with identical reach. And also, let's go and observe the rules. No three knockdown room. No standing eight count. You cannot be saved with a bow in any round. Only referee can stop the fight. And the fight is official after four rounds have been completed. And uh, gentlemen, a very good evening to you. And we welcome you to Staples Center as Premier Boxing Champions present our big night of action brought to you by Ring Star Sports in association with TGB Promotions and Showtime. Sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Masfina, and Casa Noble Tequila, the Noble Pursuit. This world championship attraction in the ring is sanctioned by the WBC, the president Mauricio Sulaiman, the supervisor Mohammed Noor. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside. From Hebron, Connecticut, Tom Carosini. From Moreno Valley, California, Eddie Hernandez Sr. And from Hesperia, California, Fernando Villarreal. Introducing our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Jack Reese. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with turquoise trunks, fighting out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. He weighed in right at the super welterweight limit of 154 pounds. His record stands at 31 wins, four losses, with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked the WBC number eight super welterweight contender. Tonight he is making his eighth world title appearance. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former WBA super welterweight champion of the world, introducing Austin. No doubt, Trout. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing a lion and leopard print trunks, fighting out of it, representing the home of the renowned boxing twins from Houston, Texas. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 154 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 30 wins, no losses, 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making the third defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning, the defending, and the undefeated WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Jermel Iron Man Charlo. Once again, a referee in charge, Jack Reese. Derek, how are you guys here? Guys, come on this side, please, Derek. Barry, come on this side right here. All right, both of these trunks are high. I'm gonna let both fighters work in here. Got it? Mouthpiece, mouthpiece. I got a righty against, stay right here. I got a righty against the lefty. Please use extra caution with your heads. Try not to step on each other's feet. Uh, I gave you instructions. I just wanna remind you, please listen and follow my directions at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Fight hard, fight clean, good luck. It is our co-main event. Austin Trout and Jermel Charlo getting on for the WBC Super Welterweight crown. Charlo looking to make Austin Trout his fifth straight victim by knockout. Trout looking to shock the world. We're here at Staples Center. Ray Flores ringside here in Los Angeles. Thank you very much for joining us wherever you may be. As you see that Trout is a softball Charlo is conventional. Trout using his jab. Barry Hunter told us in the lead up to this fight, he stated, no man is invincible. He said, if you want to be the best, you have to fight the best. And he believes that Austin has the tools to defeat Jamel Charlo. Trout fought. Jermell's brother, Jamal, over two years ago in May of 2016 in Las Vegas. And Trout 
Michael Clayton that Jamal's mother said, don't fight that man again, and he's shocked that Jamal's fighting him. And Austin Trout's always had a very good jab. Saw it in the fight against Miguel Cota. Saw it in the fight early against Jared Hurd. Jamal Trout caught out with the Iron Head Dress. Certainly very fashionable is Jamel Trotto inside the ring and outside the ring. For Austin Trotto, he needs to be able to use his jam. Whereas Charlo, not only does he have concussive knockout power, but also is very good at it when it comes to his timing. 80 seconds to go here in round one. Sends a straight left down the midsection, partially blocked by Charlie. <laughs> Standing crowd here in Los Angeles. Here, Trout, this is the best in shape I've seen Austin Trout in a very long time. He always looks in shape, but he looks really cut and, and shredded for this one. And he has to be especially dealing with someone who's a physical specimen in Jamel Charlo. The fans in a little bit restless to feel an out round. Charlo has to commit to the jab and coming forward, barreling in is Charlo. Charlo, big shot. And some haymakers by Jamel Charlo. Caught the attention of Austin Trout, but I don't think any of them landed clean. Sends a straight left down the middle. Nine or ten seconds to go on the jab right to the midsection of Jamel Charlie. And that's the end of the first. Well, you heard in the instructions, Derek James wants Jamel Charlie to jab more. Barry Hunter likes what he saw. He wants Austin Charlie to keep fighting at the pace that he is. stated, do not worry about the crowd. The crowd was getting restless, but Larry Hunter told Austin Trout, do not worry about that. Keep boxing beautifully. And straight left to the abdomen of Jamel Charlo. As Austin Trout using his jab, and Charlo, though, he does have such a tremendous amount of power coming into Tonight, Trout gained 14 pounds. They both gained 14 pounds, so they're walking in the ring at 168. Waiting at the Super Welterweight limit of 154 yesterday at the weigh-in. Trout losing his jab, and the fans, they are going to get a war when it comes to Santa Cruz and Mares yet again, but right now, I think they want a war on their hands, but it is still... This is such a high-level chess match inside the ring. Right hook that missed by Trout. And Barry Hunter telling Austin Trout in the corner, keep touching him. He wants him to keep touching him and keep Jermel Charlo off balance. A straight left that connected by the 32 with the last cruises.
game now. Charlo is trying to figure out Austin Trout, but Trout sends a straight jab or a left hand to the midsection. Around the moment, it's up round two. Fans here in Los Angeles getting restless as Charlo tries to land a big shot. You got him, Jim? Don't miss, don't load up. Very interesting out of Derek James telling Jamel Charlo that you're loading up on your punches. He goes, let it flow. You are loading up too much looking for that one punch knockout shot. For Barry Hunter telling Austin Trout, he goes, look, we got two down in their opinion. You know, he's going to get desperate. Keep fighting your fight. Ray Flores, ringside here in Los Angeles. Austin Trout, Jamel Charlo. Charlo looking to make the third defense of his super welterweight crown. His brother Jamal also here in attendance. Jamal, a number one contender in the middleweight division. Now, if you're Charlo, I'm wondering if he's still, he should be throwing his jab on. I know he's trying to time trap, but he should be throwing his jab on right hand, right to the abdomen of Trout. away from Jermel Charlo, but again, the power that Jermel Charlo has, you have got to be aware at all times. And also with, with Charlo, I'm surprised he's going, he's going head hunting, I understand that, but going to the body of Austin Trout, Trout is 32 years of age, so try to take away some of the legs out of someone who is four years older than you. You start to take away his legs, going to the body, hammering away at him, then he doesn't have the mobility that he would normally exhibit. Look at all balance between the two. 80 seconds left here in round three. Shot keeping his distance. Sends a jab right to the hip of Jamel Charlo, a straight left. And Trout now is getting more in the pocket against Jamel Charlo. He's starting to hang around the pocket more, and now Trout, bang, down goes Austin Trout with a big shot from Charlo. He hung around the pocket too long, and he paid for it. the trout is. It looked like just a flash knockdown, but you never know. Big right hand backing up Austin Trout. That was a big shot by Jermel Charlo. Now Trout has tasted the power of the 28-year-old out of Houston. Final moments of the third. A jab followed by a straight left by Austin Trout. That's a big round for Jermel Charlo. Here's right the hand. knockdown. That's only the that was a big right hand right on the chin. And Trout got put on the canvas with the left. But it was that right hook. Take a look at it again. Bang, right there on the left side, the left ear of Austin Trout. Trout going backwards. Charlo sets it, he could put him down. And then it was that left that sent Trout to the canvas, finally. On the chin of Trout, but the force carried Trout a good three or four feet back. Round number four, this one's scheduled for 12. Jamel Charlo with the 10-8 round with the knockdown over Austin Trout. I had Trout winning the first two rounds, and then Charlo with that 10-8, it makes it an even fight as we are in the fourth. If you're Austin Trout, you cannot stay in the pocket too long. You gotta jab, keep your distance, and move at all times. And you wonder if Trout, at 32 years of age, can continue to remain this active when it comes to his legs. Charlo looking again for that opportunity. 
Aaron Trodden. He needs to continue to miss his jab and straight left. That seems to be his calling card here in the fight. Big right hand by Charlo and a big one. And Trod seems to be hurt again. Now Charlo swarming Austin Trod. Trod needs to tie up and spin around and remain in the center of the ring. Now Charlo invites Austin Trod in and a right hand on the ear. I thought that affected Trod. Nearing the midway point around four. Get out of here. Yo, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. Be careful with the feet. You all right? Just watch the feet. Watch Jack Reese warning about something with the feet. Straight right hand that missed by Charlotte. <laughs> Followed by a right hook by Austin Trout. Jamel Charlo is one of the most lethal punchers in all of boxing. Charlo backs up. Good job followed by the straight left, but. Austin's punches are not backing up Jermel Charlo. And Charlo coming forward, throwing heavy stop. power. Everybody stop. Everybody stop. Step three. Go ahead and buy the ring. And now Charlo has gone to southpaw, so he's typical conventional fighter. Now he's gone to southpaw. I'm very curious. Might be given. Now he goes back to conventional. I haven't, I can't recollect a time when Jamel Charlo went to Southpaw. As we near the end of round four. There you see the lovely Chase joining us here at Staples Center, round number five. This one is scheduled for 12. Charlo's confidence is growing. And you wonder if Austin Trotty needs to be able to switch the momentum of this fight into his favor. Big right hand that connected by Jermel Charlie. And another one tying up now close distance. Step away from each other. in his jab, but Charlo walking him down. And that seems to have taken place after the knockdown, where Jamel Charlo is starting to walk down Austin Trout. Big right hand, and Trout with his back against the ropes. If you are Trout, you cannot have your back against the ropes, and he's got to do something to keep Charlo off of him. I'm surprised Trout isn't throwing an uppercut either. As Charlo comes forward, you would think that if he were to take a half a step back, that he could throw an uppercut and maybe catch Jamal Charlo coming in. And Jamel Charlo coming, advancing forward. Once again. Big right hand. That stung Austin Trout. 75 seconds to go here in the fifth. This is fighting, they're fighting at the pace that Trout is comfortable at. If you're Charles, I'm surprised he doesn't turn up the intensity that, or he really does respect the veteran acumen of the former world champion in Austin Trout. Trout, he needs to tie up. Trout gets back in the center of the ring. Trout coming forward more. And Charlo holding his ground. The combination there by 
Austin Trout. Trout with the jab ball by straight left. Great shot, it looked like a clash of heads. And Jack Reese checks them, it was a clash of heads. As we near the conclusion of round five. Close and boom, that's where it happened. Thankfully, no cuts were sustained by either fighter. That does happen, especially when you have a southpaw fighter and a conventional fighter. Round six, this one is scheduled for 12. But Jamel Charlo still coming forward. I have Charlo winning the last three rounds. Big right hand. Stop. Nobody points. Doesn't matter. Step away from each other. Once again, tying up. Looked like a low blow, and Jack Reese waiting for the action to cease. But looks over at Austin Trout and says, "You okay from the low blow?" Jack Reese, one of the best referees in the business. Trout's got to commit more to his jab. He's waiting. You can sense that he takes the power of Charlo and does not want to make a mistake. But still, he needs to be busy. Again, that's easier said than done, especially when you have a man that has the kind of power that can level you at any one moment. Big right hand that connected as Trout smiles, but didn't connect it and landed for Charlo. Screaming Austin Trout, they wanted to go back to the jab. Big right hand that connected by Charlo. And Trout having to fight his way out of this. We have 100 seconds to go here in the sixth. Trout touching Jamil Charlo. Charlo answering back with a double jab. Jab followed by a straight left down the middle for Trout. And Trout connected with a straight left. He hit Jamal Charlo, and that's a confidence booster for the 32 year old out of Las Cruces. Another big straight left for Austin Trout. See, that is the kind of veteran ability that Austin Trout has. You don't go to Madison Square Garden and win the world title, rip it away from Miguel Cotto, and you don't do that by accident. An overhand right that missed by Charlo. But this fight now, with Austin Trout being able to hurt Jamal Charlo, that says something. Luminaries here in attendance. Pedro Angulo, Sergey Lipiniets, Mikey Garcia. And left hook. That's you bending in. That's you bending in. Jack right Reese me, bro. It's gonna happen. says to Charlo that's you bending in, which is why he hits you behind the head. As we near the end of round six. That was a very right. good round for Austin right. Trout. Right? No, no, you bent in on righty lefty stuff. Like up and down with it, fade off of it, turn and go into your jab hand. Take the right hand away. He's the one-handed man. That's all he got. Let's go. And I have to state that if Charles Glove would have touched the canvas, it would have been a 10-8 round. It would have been ruled a knockdown. But Charlo, I don't know how he did it. It did look like it was planned, but he kept himself upright and did not allow his glove to touch the canvas not one bit. Ray Ford's ringside, Jamel Charlo, Austin Trout, here in Los Angeles. Charlo the champion, Austin Trout looking to become a world champion once again. They're yeah, both mixing it up more. Charlo coming forward, he's a South Carolina, he goes back to conventional. Straight right, that lands. Charlo. Now, we're seeing some lift in the legs of Austin Trout. 
there is some a sense of urgency. Now his confidence has grown, especially after he knew he tagged Jamal Charlo and had him in a weird position. And Barry Hunter screaming to Austin Trout, where's the jab? to then bending mid-range, then bending low. He's giving Charlo various looks. Charlo coming in very strong when he throws it. It's always with the intention to try to knock out your opponent. Now Charlo backing up, was being backed up by Trump. Charlo and Austin Trout. 
straight right down the middle, partially blocked. Looking to make a big statement tonight and gain hey, the victory pull up, pull up. that he feels eludes him pull. against Leo Santa Cruz. And a slip, that's a knockdown. Three, oh my four, goodness. Five, that was a roll to knockdown Jack Reese. They're saying it's potentially a shot behind the head, but that was a knockdown ruled by Jack Reese. So that's a big round for Jermel Charlo already, if he keeps it up. Straight left hand found its mark for Austin Trout. And that very well could, if it was a shot behind the head. This is a close fight on my scorecard, a big shot there by Charlo. This could be a massive round for the 28-year-old out of Houston. Stop, stop, don't get him back there. Step back. Right. Trout needs to get back to his boxing. Straight and right. Double jab for Charlo. Big right hand. And now Trout tied up. On my scorecard heading into this ninth round, I have it 76-75 in favor of Austin Trout. But that 10-8 round could be a very big difference in this fight. So it's two 10-8 rounds for Charlo. 10-8 in the third and now a 10-8 in the ninth. Big shot and Trout had to hold on to the rope. He would have been tumbling to the canvas. Yeah, that, now that, in my opinion, should have been ruled a knockdown because Trout used himself, used the ropes to keep himself upright. So, I guess, as they like to say it in, in, in its payback, and Waldo, my big right hand by Charlo. He has Trout hurt. It's almost as they say in basketball, when you call a foul, you don't call a foul. The ball doesn't lie. That's why some guys miss free throws after a foul that shouldn't be a foul was called. So, guess it's even when it comes to the 10-8 round. Big straight left for Austin Trout. But this has been a big round for Jermel Charlo. Trout still in the center of the ring and has given a very good account of himself. Many people thought Charlo was going to come and steamroll him, but that has not been the case. Big right hand, Charlo loading up, and that'll end round number nine. Again, here's another look at it. It's the left as we zero in, boom, it was behind the head, clearly behind the head. And Trump went tumbling to the canvas. All right, it's a flash knockdown. Forget it, people. And Jack Reese is coming is. over and telling, he's telling Austin Trump, he goes, it was a flash You're knockdown, right forget about change. it, move on. Let's go. Hey, back him up, man. Number 10, get back, please, get back, please. Number 10. And the way that Jack Reese was positioned, it looked like he was in a proper spot. He was not out of position. But nonetheless, that is a 10-8 round. So I had, now Charlo has gone ahead of Trout, 85-84, with three rounds remaining. Trout wearing the brown, and the leopard came in with the lions only with the headdress. Jack Reed's morning, both fighters about keeping the punches up. Big right hand, that found its mark, and now Charlo moving forward, but he got clipped by Trout. Charlo came in forward and he got clipped by Trout. So Charlo isn't as steadfast and as the one to come forward. Big right hand by Jermel Charlo. Straight left and a shot to the body by Austin Trout. He 
These are the championship rounds wow. here at Staples Center. Jermel Charlo okay? Austin Trout could be getting tangled up for a brief moment. Straight left, right to the midsection. Just over the midway point of the 10th. Trout stepping inside, a nice straight left. Trout hammering away in the body of Jamal Charlo. Chopping left hand, but a big straight left. And Trout might be hurt. Come here. And Jack You're Reese. Right. His head was outside the ring. He's not allowed to hit you. Okay, so Trout's head. His head was outside the ring. Go hit him when he's like that. You good? You ready? You ready? Mox. Trout's head was outside the ring, and then Charlo hit him. And Jack Reese stopped the action. But I think Trout is still hurt. I don't know if he recovered from that heavy shot. Now Trout doesn't have as much spring on his legs as he did in the past few rounds. I don't know if that shot affected him. Big right hand. Now Trout needs to tie up. Box. A big right hand by Charlo. Trout going backwards. Oh, you heard that here at the broadcast position. And Trout still keeps himself vertical. What a chin on Austin Trout. Another big shot from the WBC Super Welterweight Champion. And Trout answers back with a right hook. Face. And here is more of the action. Big right hand. And that was a heavy right hand. We heard that. And Trout kept himself Hold upright. Up, so that's another round for Jermella Charlo, in my opinion. Two more rounds remaining. We are deep into the championship rounds for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship. Charlo, the champion, defending this round for the third time. his ground and also I believe is out pointing Austin Charlo with a big right hand followed by a left but Trot answers back but Jamal Charlo now is really in his ground. There's a right uppercut that got through the guard by Austin Trout. Trout using his jab, but still Charlo keeping his distance. 100 seconds left here in the 11th. Big right hand followed by a left as Charlo becoming more the aggressor. Left by Trout, followed by a right hook. Trout's got to have a sense of urgency. This may be one of the final times that he challenges for a world title, and he has to sense that you cannot fight complacent and get away from the champion. Straight left as we caught Charlo coming in. Austin Trout has had a terrific career and believes that this win over Jamal Charlo would be his biggest accomplishment. Barry Hunter imploring Austin Trout to step to Jamal Charlo. When it comes to, from a statistical standpoint, 80 headshots have landed for Jamal Charlo, just 38 for Austin Trout. Right hand down the middle by Jermel Charlo. As we near the end of the 11th, one more round remaining between Jermel.
Jermel Charlo and Austin Trump. Charlo in control, especially as we have approached the championship rounds. Barry, his shoes, sole came out. Take the shoe. The sole on the back. All right. It is a 12th and final round between Jermel Charlo Austin. and Austin up. Trout. Step back. They touch gloves, Five. sign respect. But Austin Trout needs a big round. If he is to go and try to win the WBC Super Welterweight Championship, Charlo looking to make his third defense tonight. And Charlo starting out strong here in the 12th. Charlo is fighting like the man who's behind in the scorecards. Trout is fighting like, and now he's putting together more combinations. But I really wonder, is in the ninth and the 10th, Trout, his activity rate has lessened. Taken quite a while to tally the scorecards, and now we'll send it up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. We have a majority decision. Judge at ringside, Fernando Villarreal scores about 113 to 113, even a draw. Overruled by judges Eddie Hernandez Sr., who scores about 115 to 111, and Tom Carasoni scores about 118 to 108 in favor of the majority decision winner. And still, the undefeated WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Jermel Iron Man Charlo. So Jermel Charlo, still the WBC Super Welterweight Champion, making his third successful title defense. 
And that wasn't easy, but still, 113, 113 by Fernando Villarreal. I don't know what he was looking at. That is strange to me. But nonetheless, Jermel Charlo makes his third successful title defense, and here's Brian Custer. Congratulations on the victory. Two knockdowns here. You go the distance. Uh, you know, most of the fans, hold up, hold up, let me tell you something. How you, let me tell you something. <laughs> yeah. They want it. Look, the, the, I, went, I went to fish. I got some, I tried to get some trout, but I couldn't get them on the hook. You did? I couldn't catch that trout on the hook. I know they used to send me knock the boys out, but I'm glad that they got a chance to send me trout. At least I gave them what I got. You had knocked out your last four opponents. Obviously, you go to distance for the first time in five fights. Do you think you were trying to press too much for the knockout, especially early on in this fight? Well, I already knew Trout was going to come in and try to survive. I love you, L.A. I love you, Los Angeles, California. Last only for life. Trout, Trout wasn't going out like that. Trout is a veteran. He's a real fighter, but I don't know what that judge was looking at. I know for a fact I ain't win no majority decision, but it's all good. Sometimes you knock some out, sometimes you just beat them. So you're disappointed that one of the judges had it as a draw and even? Man, I worked very hard on this camp. You know, I gave it my all, so, you know, for a judge to say that I won in majority draw, you know what I mean, whatever that was, I think it's BS. I looked at Chow right when they said it. He knew they, 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 they wouldn't ride for him. So what's next for Jamel Charlo? I know you've been very vocal about unifying. Do you believe you can get a unification fight with the unified champion Jared Hurd here before the year's over. This is something that y'all gonna be able to tell y'all right here. Y'all gonna tell you who gonna win that fight because if Hurd sit in front of me, if Hurd sit in front of me, it's, it's Charles move right now. That's why he survived 12. But if, if Hurd sit in front of me and just take them shots, I guarantee you, I guarantee you. So yeah, I wanna unify and I'll do it right here in LA. <laughs> Jamel, thank you very much. Congratulations on the victory. Let's bring in Austin Trout. Well, that was Jamel Charlo, and clearly the, the fans here in Los Angeles so were not, they don't Jim enjoy the, the judges scores initially. and now here's Brian with Austin Trout. First of all, first and foremost, I got to give all praises to Yahuwah, Yahir, Elohim, Baruch Hashem, Yahuwah. Second of all, I want to thank Al Heyman for these opportunities. Hope he keeps putting me in. You see I'm right there with him. Take those knockdowns away. I won that fight. It was a good fight. He's strong. He got the best out of it today. I can't make no excuses. He's the better man one with those knockdowns. Now you fought both Charlo brothers. What is your evaluation of Jamel and Jamal fought Charlo? Which one's the better fight? Man, they both good as hell. They are the future. But I still got now. I don't care who got next. I ain't done yet, man. You're not done yet? Absolutely not. I mean, I'm not defined by my results. I'm defined by the risks I take. And I've taken the most risks out of anybody in this division, more so than even them. So uh, that's what defines me, and I've stood at my ground every time against Giants, against Killers, against all of them. So I'm still here. You know, you, you've you already fought Jared Hurd. You've now fought Jermell Charlo. He wants a unification fight with Jared Hurd. If that fight takes place, what do you think happens? Man, that's a damn good fight. Charlo could crack. Jared Hurd's resilient. It's going to be like an immovable force against a unstoppable thing, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I can't call it. It's going to be a great fight. I'm definitely going to be tuned in.